In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. From the Magnificat, Holy Week 2023, Volume 25, Number 2. Page 139. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, shedding of his blood, established the paschal mystery, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, Grant that just as, being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may be the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Solemn Intercessions For the Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord may be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Almighty Father. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your Church, spread throughout the whole world, may persevere with steadfast faith in in confessing your name, Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Pope, let us pray also for the Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishop, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, that in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him, the Christian people, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all orders and degrees of the faithful, let us pray also for Bishop Sean O'Malley, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. For catechumens, let us pray also for our catechumens, that our Lord and God may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who made your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that we born in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together in integrity of faith and united by the bond of charity to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter into the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before you with sincerity of heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> for those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those 
who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right and sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people, to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you, come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of your good works, done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, grant to travelers safety to pilgrims return, help to the sick and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or how have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of the land of Egypt, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. <coughs> because I led you through the desert forty years, and fed you with manna, and brought you to a land of plenty, you have prepared a cross for your Savior. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. What more should I have done for you and did not do? Indeed, I planted you as my most beautiful chosen vine, and you have turned very bitter towards me. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. I led you from Egypt as Pharaoh sunk in the Red Sea, and you handed me over to the chief priests. I opened up the sea before you, and you have opened my side with the lance. My people, what have I done to you? My people, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? Answer me. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Agios Ophaeos, Agios Ischiros, Agios Athanatos, Eleisonimas. Sanctus Fortus, Sanctus, Sanctus Deus, Sanctus Fortus, Sanctus Immortalis, Miserere Nobis. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us worship him. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us worship him. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us worship him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who honor the death of your Son in the hope of their own resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 177 at the bottom. A meditation of the day, it is finished. At this moment, as the last drop of the precious blood has passed from his broken heart, with the power beyond that of a dying man, Jesus cries out in triumph, it is finished. Friendship between God and man is now made possible again in the body of Christ. The old irreconcilable enmity between the sin of the creature and the justice of the creator, between the defilement of the spirit and the holiness of the father of spirits, is done away. We can be accepted in the beloved. First, then, salvation is open to the sinner. No sin henceforth is unforgivable. Charity, it has been said, is the pardoning of the unpardonable and the loving of the unlovable. And in this precious blood, as the prophet sang, there shall be a fountain open for the washing of the sinner and of the unclean, Zechariah 13, 1. And as John wrote, it is this blood which cleanses us from all sin, 1 John 1, 7. The friendship of God, therefore, is flung wide open to every soul that desires it. But more than this, not only is mere friendship made possible by the death of Christ, but degrees of friendship to which even the angels cannot aspire. In the power of the precious blood and the grace of the sacraments liberated by its shedding, every action, word, and thought can be brought into obedience to Christ. The soul can, by the same grace, teach a point of union with him, so vital and so complete, that she can truly cry, With Christ I am nailed to the cross, and I live now, not I, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2, 19-20. Christ's work, then, is finished on the cross. Finished. Finished, that is, not as closed and concluded, but finished. As bread is finished from the mills and the fire, that it may be eaten. As wine is finished after the stress and trampling of the winepress. Finished. As a man's body is finished in the womb of his mother and brought forth with travail. It is finished. That is, for a new and glorious beginning, that the stream that has flowed from his wounds may begin to flood the souls of men and the flesh that had been broken. Feed them indeed. For now the passion of Christ begins to be wrought in his mystical body, and she begins to fill up those things that are wanting in the sufferings of Christ. Colossians 1.24 Now the enormous process that has crushed and mangled him in his assumed nature begins effectively to carry on that same work of redemption in the human nature of his church, which, mystically, is the body in which he dwells always. By Monsignor Robert Hugh Benson. Monsignor Benson, who died in 1914, was a British convert to Catholicism and is best known for his novels about the faith. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The hymn on page 179. Glory be to Jesus, who in bitter pains poured for me the lifeblood from his sacred veins. Grace and life eternal, in that blood I find, blessed be his compassion, infinitely kind. Blessed through endless ages, be the precious stream which from endless torment doth the world redeem. Where there the fainting spirit drinks of life her fill, there is in a fountain, laves herself at will, Abel's blood for vengeance, 
pleaded to the skies, but the blood of Jesus for our pardon cried. Lift ye then your voices, swell the mighty flood, louder still and louder, praise the precious blood. Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Matthew 27 and 50. In his death is our death slain. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24. Christ suffered for you and left you an example to have you follow in his footsteps. He did no wrong. No deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he was made to suffer, he did not counter with threats. Instead, he delivered himself up to the one who judges justly. In his own body, he brought your sins to the cross so that all of us dead to sin could live in accord with God's will. By his wounds, you were healed. Romans 6, 8-11 If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. Christ became obedient for us even unto death, death on a cross. He was crucified, died, and was buried, as we profess in the creed. And he rose from the dead. The intercessions at the bottom of page 181. Before the crucified love of God, we bow in wonder and we pray, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For the Church, grant us perseverance in faith. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For our Holy Father, protect and guide him in his service to the Gospel, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, make them holy guides for all your people, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For those preparing for baptism in the profession of faith, enliven them with love, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For the Jewish people, first to hear the word of God. Bring them to the fullness of redemption, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For those who do not believe in Christ, lead them to the truth, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For those who do not believe in God, grant that all may find you, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For all who serve in public office, grant them wisdom and compassion, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For all who are in need, hear the prayers of all who call upon you, we pray. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. May the angels lead us into paradise. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before his shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Isaiah 53, 7. From the Lenten Reflections with Pope Francis from Catholic Near East Prayer Association, 2023, page 59. Lord Jesus, help us to see in your cross all the crosses of the world, the cross of people hungry for bread and for love, the cross of people alone and abandoned, even by their children and kin, the cross of people thirsty for justice and for peace, the cross of people who lack the comfort of faith, the cross of the elderly who struggle under the weight of years and loneliness. The cross of migrants who find doors closed in fear and hearts armored by political calculations. The cross of little ones wounded in their innocence and their purity. The cross of humanity that wanders in the darkness of uncertainty in the obscurity of temporary culture. The cross of families split by betrayal, by the seductions of the evil one, or by homicidal levity and selfishness. The cross of our weaknesses, of our hypocrisy, of our betrayals, of our sins, of our many broken promises. The cross of your church that, faithful to your gospel, struggles to spread your love even among the baptized themselves. Lord Jesus, revive in us the
the hope of resurrection, and of your definitive victory over all evil and death. Amen. The prayer by Pope Francis from Good Friday, 2019. And from the Magnificat Lenten Companion, February 22nd, April 9th, Lent 2023. Friday, April 7th, Good Friday of the Passion of the Lord. We thought of him as one smitten by God, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. By his stripes we were healed. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. <clears throat> By giving up his own son for our sins, God manifests that his plan for us is one of benevolent love, prior to any merit of our part. It is in this love, not that he, we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the expiation of our sins. 1 John 4, 10 and 4, 19. God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8, from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 604. From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Judas, Judas went out with his disciples to a garden. Judas' betrayer knew the place. The band of soldiers seized Jesus, and Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. And Jesus answered, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Then the chief priests and the guards saw him and cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called Golgotha. <coughs> there they crucified him. Standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Jesus said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Page 64. The beloved face and heart. There is no preparation for the first moment of gazing on the face of a family member who has died. For each of my parents, I went early to the funeral home to be alone with them before the viewing hours commenced. Each time, the awareness of finality, of a life concluded, combined with the strong sense of every loved person alive in soul at that hour. What was it like for Mary to gaze on the face of Jesus after his death? She had perhaps a half hour to do so, while permissions were sought from Pilate to end the crucifixions and remove the bodies from the crosses. The sorrow of Mary in that interlude is unimaginable. Her eyes cast on her son's face in death are a mystery in themselves. Yet, in that gaze of love, she knew fully that Jesus had completed his work in his saving death on the cross, and she loved him intensely. One soldier thrust his lance into his side, the brutal piercing of the heart of Jesus must have shocked all present there. For Mary, it was something more, namely a mystical wounding of her heart on this dreadful day. Suddenly she poured out her offering as blood and water flowed from Jesus' heart. She surrendered again her yes to God that she first prayed at the Annunciation. Meditation by Father Donald Haggerty. Father of love, Grant that this day of your son's suffering and death may renew in us a desire for union with the hearts of Jesus and Mary and with all who suffer. And from Father Peter Cameron, Dominican, page 65. What has the cross given to those who have gazed upon it and to those who have touched it? What has the cross left in each one of us? You see, it gives us a treasure that no one else can give, the certainty of the faithful love that God has for us. 
a love so great that it enters into our sin and forgives us, enters into our suffering and gives us the strength to bear it. It is a love that enters into death to conquer it and save us. The cross of Christ contains all the love of God, and there we find his immeasurable mercy. This is a love in which we can place all our trust, in which we can believe, by Pope Francis. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. from the Maronite Book of Offering for Good Friday. Page 310. Great sacrifice, Paschal Lamb, Christ our God, you brought good hope and salvation to all. Save us now by your passion, Lord, and grant peace to your faithful church, and prepare us this day for that feast of the saints. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 